Hey, everybody. Welcome to our presentation. My name is Glenn Hausman. You might know me from No Vacancy Live and No Vacancy News, which you see every single day on the internet at noon Eastern Standard Time. Also, I'm a co-author of this book, The Adapters, which I wrote along with Sean Worker. And I'm very excited because in that book, we talked about gutsy genius thinkers. We talked about folks that are adapting and innovated, innovating the ones that are making big differences now in order to help our future. And that is kind of the theme of what we're talking about today. And I got two gutsy genius thinkers here today, thinking about things differently, reinventing uh, the way that we do things that we thought were sacrosanct in our incredible business over here, and they're changing, uh, changing things up. So let me bring in our two guests today. I have Mr. Eric Eisenberg. He's the VP of Hospital Hospitality with Pure Lynn. Welcome aboard, Eric. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Great to be here, Glenn. All right, let me do this. All right, because we have, we're virtual today. And uh, Mr. Lloyd Major, CEO and co-founder of Halo Solutions. Welcome, Lloyd. Hi there. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> so I've got to have a little bit of fun with these kinds of things. So gentlemen, so great to see you here today. I thought maybe the best place for us to start off before we get into innovation, before we get into adaption, before we get into specifics about what your projects are, maybe you could just share with us a quick understanding of what your companies are all about. Lloyd, let's start with you, sir. Okay, thank you, Glenn. So our business is all about... Uh, providing software for control rooms in the main. So these can be control rooms in the hospitality and leisure industry, for example, sports stadia, music arenas, and uh, businesses ranging from anything like Notting Hill Carnival in London mm -hmm. to uh, the Royal Navy and several sports stadia and arenas. Just replacing spreadsheets, which are untrustworthy, unclogging those radio channels that are full of information so we can't get emergencies in and also uh, replacing those whatsapp groups which we you know we can't use later on at court when we need to excellent um well eric uh, that's interesting now you could you do something a wee bit different <laughs> <You know? laughs> completely different yeah so, so tell us a little bit about what you guys are up to so at, at pureland um we are we, we've taken a completely different different track. Uh, we offer a paradigm shifting break with conventional bed linens. Something right. you, 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 you know, the, the standard everyday uh, uh, cotton sheet is, is not what we do. Uh, our bed linen solution offers guests the opportunity to never sleep on communal sheets again. Uh, one time uh, for one guest. Uh, it's, it, sheets are never reused, they're hypoallergenic, they're soft, pH balanced contain no bleach, detergents, chemicals. Yep. Uh, our zero waste, zero laundry system saves millions of gallons of water and waste water each year. Um, and you know, our sheets are designed for comfort. They're, they're equivalent to about a six or 800 thread count sheet and it's 100% recyclable. Wow. And that, that is what's uh, really cool. Now, this is new and different, something I've never seen before. In fact, Eric, I've been around in this business 26, 27 years now. Uh, you know, you can tell by all the, the, the gray hair that I'm getting here. I've been around for a little while and I haven't seen something this different in such a long time. Where does this idea come from? to just really reinvent things. We'll get into the specifics, guys, in a few minutes about specifically how this comes together. It's really fascinating, but no one's ever sat around a campfire and go, how could we save money? Oh, let's have disposable linen, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, well, our, our founder, Rich Farrell, you know, is, is a lifelong hotelier and, and you know, through the, the, the trials and tribulations of, of all of our hotel lives, you know, we see, we see opportunities and, and, you know, to really be able to, to think of something that truly uh, tips the, 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 the daily uh, routine on its, on its ear is, is an, an opportunity that, that really is something we, we love to talk about. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, the, everybody, every, all the hotels now have, have approached a, a green forward initiative yep. and, and, and really have, have picked the low hanging fruit. Everyone has low flow toilets and everybody has low flow shower heads and LED bulbs and they've adjusted their landscaping and, and done all those little things that, that are easy, that have become easy. Now it's time for the hard stuff. Now it's time for the hard decisions to say, you know, especially here in Las Vegas where I am, we have a water crisis. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of other communities, uh, uh, in not just desert communities, but California, uh, Florida, you know, even, even, even the remote uh, uh, 
far edges of our of our hospitality community have have a water issue and, and clean water issue. What better way to save that water than to not do laundry? And we provide that opportunity. You know, our our our, our sheets are 100% recyclable. They're 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 maintained in a closed loop system, so they're they're created. Um, woven, created by, with, with man-made, uh, man-made uh, uh, fabrics, um, put on, on hotel beds, stripped away, and then, and then recycled. Uh, so, so there's no water, there's, for, for the water that's used, um, you know, to, to create one queen size cotton sheet mm -hmm. is around uh, 2,600 gallons of water, just to create one sheet. Uh, to create one purulent sheet is about a little less than a gallon. So it, it, it really is. And that's just the creation of it, to, to launder say, it and to maintain it, it. To wash it, a single sheet. One oh, to, to, you know, to washing. Washing is, is in the tens of millions of gallons because of your PAR levels, because of, of the, the, constant, uh, the, the constant use. Uh, you know, how many times, you know, from, from a hotelier standpoint, do you have guests that are upset that their bed linens are dirty or perceived dirty or they have a smell or they... They just don't, they, they're ripped. Our sheets come perfect every time. They're, they're, they're folded. They don't require any uh, pre-washing, pre-laundering, pre-treatment right out of the, out of the, 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 the uh, hypoallergenic pH balance package onto the bed, off the bed into, into a, 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 a similar package uh, that, that is completely uh, we call, we call it melted, but it, you know, it goes into a, a, a giant recycle pelletizer that, that reduces, you know, it's, it's low on a carbon footprint standard, reduces the, uh, the, the sheets to, to a, a liquid that is, turns back around into, into the, the, the fabric that we use. So it's, it's truly a unique opportunity, uh, you know, to, to, to bolster your green initiatives, to bolster your water conservation and sustainability efforts and to think differently. I got some more questions on that, but I want to turn it to uh, Lloyd for a second. Lloyd, you're the CEO and founder of, uh, of Halo. So um, where do you seek inspiration? How did this idea come to be? And, you know, tell us a little bit more about that, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, very tragically, 22 people died at the Manchester Arena bombing over here when we had the Ariana Grande concert in 2016. Um, and the I was head of tactical support at the National Counterterrorism Unit at the time, and that gave me a, a unique insight into some of the problems that people were having, uh, particularly around those communications. And as the public inquiry has come to a conclusion, the results of which are published in 10 days time, we have come to learn that as a direct result for at least a couple of those deaths, that it was the um, blockage of the communications on the ground. Mm -hmm. Nobody could really say where exactly where the casualties were, right. who needed to move through the hot zone to get to them and uh, how that was managed. So that gave us an insight into, well, well from the incident in, in 2017, sorry, into um, the Halo system and how it can help. Mm -hmm. And we're really proud to say that as of uh, today, we've saved four lives and protected over wow. 10 million people and we've won eight awards. So it's been a really, uh, really busy last couple of years. Um, even with the coronavirus pandemic, we've had to innovate so that, uh, you know, sporting events and festivals and music arenas were all closed. So this is where we're now opening up our software to support um, the hotel and leisure industry and to support uh, hospitals and um, businesses in a broad, broad range of uh, uh, right. features. So, so Lloyd, how does this actually actually work yeah i'm thinking music festivals and stuff and from my point of view lloyd i'm just there to have a good time i'm partying i'm not sure. worried about security sure. you're doing well you mentioned so, a earlier like um you know spreadsheets and stuff like that so yeah I, i'm confused i just want to have a good time and make sure that you guys have all the tools to keep people safe so so just for fun what was the last event you went to uh, what was the last event i went to uh, you know, it's such a long time ago. Uh, the last real, the last real fun thing I went to was a fish concert, Madison Square Garden, December thirtieth, twenty nineteen. 
Cool. Okay. So you're at Madison Square Gardens and you've gone there with a friend. Let's call let's call him Steve. That uh, is his you... name for real. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's say you lose Steve and you go up to it, you go up to a steward. He or she is wearing a bright high vis yellow jacket, and you yep. say, Hey, I've lost I've lost my friend Steve. Mm-hmm. So what happens is that steward then has to get on the radio if right. there's a gap if nobody's talking rubbish, right. uh, they get on the radio and they report it to the control room and they say, hey, Steve's missing. Uh, and they'll give a description of Steve. They may well write that into a spreadsheet and then repeat it for everyone else to hear. And there might be another 400 stewards. At the same time as there are probably 10, 20 slip strips or falls, a couple of other missing people. Right. If there's a fight that will dominate the radio, so no one can really get anything done until that fight's been resolved. Right. So you have a a backlog of communications and all we, so radio was invented around 100 150 years ago and all we've done since is add more radio channels so you have a security channel a cleaning right. channel a traffic man and, and hospitality and then to supplement the radio channels all we've really done is add whatsapp groups um so what happens with the halo system is you go up to the steward and say hey i've lost my friend steve right and the steward gets out a device, uh, either provided by us or used by them. Uh, we do integrated radios and uh, mobile phones, cell phones. And they take the device out and say, have you got a photo of Steve? Yeah, here's his Facebook, Twitter profile. I've got a picture of me and him that I took outside. Take a photo of a photo, share it straight away with 400 people. So now everyone can look for Steve and they can see him. Right. And if there's another three people missing at the same time and they're all... Uh, of a similar description you know if you go to a a Manchester United football match Mm -hmm. you're going to come across 20,000 white guys who may or may not have that's right uh, no hair and a red t-shirt on it's the same thing with the concerts I go to a similar profile of people (laughs) yeah yeah and and the the research tells us that on average people can do seven things at once plus or minus two and the research also shows that in a crisis, you have a memory capacity of about 30 seconds. So during steady state, if we're already overwhelmed with five or six radio channels, two or three different WhatsApp groups, and the spreadsheet that we need to fill in, our capacity to do things, even when there are multiple small incidents taking place, you then forget about them. Steve's one of 50 things that are taking place at any one time is going to get forgotten about. Uh, And, and we automate the whole lot. That is pretty awesome. All right. So now I totally get it. Makes a whole lot of sense. It's um, it, it, and again, both of your companies and both of these ideas are really incredible because they take something that should be obvious, but has been elusive all this time until you somehow figured it all out. Uh, Eric, I want to get back to you a little bit. Um, you know, th- you know, he's got a really cool product at Halo. You've got a really cool product at uh, at at Purelin. So, what really uh, are hoteliers thinking when you bring this to them? How do you present an idea that's so different, something that they're not used to at all, and get them to really understand it clearly so that they they get on board? Yeah, so it, it, it's so, it has been so well received in concept. Everybody loves the idea of, of non communal linen, something that I'm not, you know, if you, t- if you talk to your granny, if you talk to your, your best friend, if you talk to the, the, the hotel manager down the street, they love the idea of having non communal linen that, mm-hmm. that they're the only ones to sleep on, on that, that sheet. And, it, and it, then to know that it, not only that, it gets recycled. Right. Love it. But, but when it comes to the discussion of, of a different finance model, that's where the challenge comes, you know, comes up. Um, you know, and, and I explained that, you know, I said, it's not, it's not apples to apples by any means. It's not, uh, you're, you're spending X for your laundry services now, we will seamlessly walk in and, and take care of everything. That's not really how it works because when you think of, of, of replacing or, or adjusting what you spend on on services with laundry you, you'd have to take out all the water cost all the wastewater cost all the labor cost all the power cost all the chemicals all the transportation that's a huge number and, and every hotel is different you know a lot of hoteliers you know they look at their PL every week or every you know every week every day every week and and they you know they just see that big energy number that big gas number 
and they don't know the 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 point of which their housekeeping or laundry department is generating that compared to that number. Right. Um, so so when you when you peel away all those layers, and you say, well, you know, now now we have the opportunity to to save on labor. We have the opportunity to to you know in a, in a tight labor market to say, well, let's let's reallocate somebody instead of having two shifts on on laundry on you know day and swing let's let's have just a day shift um let you know let's let's reduce all the water that we use all the all the chemicals that are going back into the environment you know then when you look at that number that you that you that you reduce to say all right so now you know instead of spending 75 dollars or so on a on a cotton set of sheets we can spend you know, twelve dollars on a on a on a Purelin sheet sheet set um, that makes it more compelling. That that right. that, that in, introduces a more compelling conversation. And oh, okay, wait a second. So it is it is a single a single guest use, but I don't have to worry about damage. I don't have to worry about someone claiming that they have bed bugs or they have allergic reaction or they have all these different oddities that guests normally complain about and it's it and it it takes care of all all the issues all my expenses all you know it it, it really is like i said it's a compelling conversation um and it 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 it, it will definitely take the the four the forethought of a, of a of an innovative hotelier to 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 drop these into their into their wellness rooms into their spa rooms uh you know especially here in las vegas with with uh resort fees and and, and up charges and all those different things, it's an easy, it's an easy add to those different upsells. So, you know, f- from, from a, an operation standpoint, I always say, you know, you can add, uh, you know, you, you, you create a spa package or a wellness package around these sheets. You're already charging $50 more for a bigger bottle of water and, you know, unlimited Wi-Fi, and you get to go to the spa tuck in these sheets and, right. and it, I mean, it's a, it's a no brainer and people will get used to the, the uniqueness of the, the, the single, the, the single guest use. Yeah. And in this particular context, remember the, the guest is not price sensitive, they're value sensitive. And by rolling right. something like this into your program, you're creating that extra special value that sets people apart. And Eric, the other thing I really like about this is you know, all of these other expenses that are removed from it that we aren't commonly thinking about. So I could see why you need to spend a little time connecting the dots, but I bet a lot of light bulbs go off as soon as you do that, right? So Lloyd, taking it over to uh, to you, we got a question from the audience. As the world is undergoing a major shift, do you think we need to think more globally or locally? And then how does your thoughts about your products and stuff like that maybe fit into that type of routine? Okay, I think there are uh, pros and cons to both. So from some of our clients, for example, will have a global footprint like ASM Global. So hundreds of stadia, shopping malls, uh, football, soccer stadiums, arenas around the world. And it would make sense for them to have a lined up uh, procurement process and uh, joined up systems and the same method of operation across the board so they've got a deep insight at the strategic level where they can really turn data into knowledge and start doing that trend analysis to drive performance and improve the bottom line. But then when you get into the granular detail at the local level, some of those venues have a really strong connection to their local communities. They have a lot of heart and soul there. They're a big employer. Um, they'll, they will want the ability to strike out on their own and have deals which might be carbon uh, negative, they might support a local charity, uh, so they need some flexibility. So I think that when I I sit on on panels sometimes and get asked questions like this, I think I I pivot to an area of strength where I say that I think irrespective of what the approach might be, if people remember to listen uh, and to be flexible in their approaches, they can get the best balance of both worlds. Uh, So I don't know if it's a if it's a supply chain question and we're looking at sustainability and reducing carbon footprints, then being local will always be good. So you don't have those massive global supply chains and the delivery impact right. that, that they contribute to. 
Uh, but for us as a business, we have a relatively light carbon footprint. In fact, actually, we, we went carbon neutral in 2018 and then in 2019 went one step further to be carbon negative. And, and last year, we reached all the way back to 2014 to offset all the carbon since we were first created. So it was not a particularly expensive thing to do, but something that we felt was important for us to do. And I suppose, depending on what the audience member was thinking, if it, if it was a sustainability question, then then that would be my view on that. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's interesting because depending on what the topic is, you do need to think globally or you need to think uh, locally in that regards. We have another question from the audience. I'll give it the answer first. And then you guys, if you don't mind jumping in, if you want to answer it, which is the only reason why I'm going to take this one first. It's a little tricky. Where is the enterprise level innovation that improves staff retention and hire a current issue in the hospitality industry. So guys, I just happened to come off a show that I did today on uh, No Vacancy Live, which of course airs uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern time. We had on Harris Rosen. For those of you who don't know, he's an iconic hotelier. He owns eight hotels down in the, uh, the Orlando area, about 6,700 rooms over there. But what makes him different is that he really takes care of his employees and their families in a real and meaningful way. And it's made all the difference to his company and to how people stick around. The today's interview wasn't about how awesome it was. It was about how much money he saved. He saved over $450 million over the last 30 years because he created his own health clinic, the Rosen Medical Center, and his own insurance that went along with it, reducing the cost to insure every single employee by more than 50%. Not only that, but because everything is essentially free for the employees, they go, they get that preventative care. They take care of themselves in a meaningful way. They pay for two communities in the area for, for preschool for everyone. He sent thousands of kids to college. These are the types of things that have made a difference. These are the types of things that give him the lowest turnover rate in the entire hospitality industry, right? So he's saving a ton of money by not having to replace staff while improving everybody's lives and saving a ton of money just on health costs alone. So that is an innovation. That is something that we should be talking about. And Eric, it goes back to what you were saying, all of those hidden costs, right? For every employee that doesn't quit, you don't have to spend $4,500 or whatever it is to replace that employee. So he saved that 450 million and tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars more not having to replace people. So I love that you guys are thinking differently. Now that to me is real innovation, Eric, where you, you can bring in all these other things that people didn't think about and really help their bottom line. How do you see that? Oh, and that's, that's completely right. You know, it, it's the, the point of difference that, the, the hospitality innovators that will, that will make in the future mm -hmm. to set them apart, you know, the, whether it's the, the way that they handled the pandemic, uh, you know, from, from start to current to future, mm -hmm. um, to, the, to the way that they're, they're handling their business model. You can't, the, the thing that we learned, all of us, is that it, it is a different 365 days ago, completely different world. Mm -hmm. So the, if, you're, if you're doing things the same way you did 365 plus days ago, you're, you're already behind. And, and that's what we're trying to, to, you know, both on the, on the innovation side, but also on the reality side to, right. to your point, you know, in, in, in employee retention to the, to the, to the question, you have to do things different. You have to be able to revise your standard model, your, your, your standard of business to make things better. You don't want to make things worse because they're darn pretty darn bad as the, as it is now. Um, but you, you know, you want to, you know, you open, open up, you know, your, 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 your thought process, consider alternatives, wh whether it's, whether it's, you know, laund laundry from Pureland or whether it's, it's staffing or, or, you know, your, your average, your pay rates or your, your insurance or, you know, the things that the, the, the flexible schedules, there, there has to be some, some, uh, some, some, movement and latitude um, and, and knowledge and, and that we've learned. 
Yeah, Lloyd, um, you know, one of the ways that um, I, I can see that you are working for uh, helping companies with staff retention and stuff is through your training division, right? My guess is that if you empower people with knowledge and insight, they feel better in their jobs and they're more likely to stick around. How do you see it? Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, and they feel safer in what they do. I think the current climate will be really interesting as uh, over here, we, fingers crossed, emerge from the coronavirus restrictions and return to sporting events, festivals and arenas. And we were back in 2019, probably about 15% short of security staff, mm -hmm. uh, particularly over holiday weekends uh, around August and summertime. Um, so it was really difficult to make sure all the slots were filled with all the people that had the right skills. And now we've had a year or two of all of those uh, really valuable members of staff not being able to work uh, in that industry. They've moved towards security guarding at vaccine sites, at hospitals. Some of them have taken up jobs as delivery drivers for uh, different companies, online food delivery, etc. And it'll be interesting to see if we can encourage them to return to the industry to keep us all safe when we go back to work. So it's not just staff retention in the sense that that fabulous chap who owns those hotels has been able to achieve yep. um, and, and what a wonderful achievement that is, but also to staff migration um, and staff mobility, people coming in at the entry level and getting promoted and feeling rewarded and, and being able to move up. So a lot of our training is around okay, great, you might be a security guard, but um, you know you want to be a security supervisor, then you might want to be in command, make command decisions, you need command training, yeah. uh, to be all of those things. So we can get, we can really feel the value of, of being in the workplace. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Guys, believe it or not, our time is almost up today. So we got to go to some closing thoughts before I wrap this bad boy up. Lloyd, your final thought, and then we'll go to Eric. Oh, okay. I guess um, really to resonate on what Eric was saying about that requirement on the industry to sometimes invest to save uh, and, and looking at all of those hidden costs and pulling everything together and realizing that uh, for us, at least the paper trail, the planning, the preparation, all of that can be digitized and, and the savings that, that digital help can provide uh, and listening to what people need in order to bring about that effective change to transform the culture and transform the industry to provide that digital safety. Right, and that is uh, absolutely uh, essential. And I think what you're really talking about, Lloyd, is uh, something that I've been talking about for years, rethinking conventional thinking. Just because people think one way and it always seems to be that way, there's lots of opportunities to rethink everything and all the different pieces that you're doing in your business to help engage your employees, to help you move your company forward, to help you make more money. Eric, any final thoughts from you, sir? You know, in the, the immortal words of, of Elon Musk, it's only crazy until it's not. Right. And, you know, with, with uh, you know, with thinking differently and, and, and trying to, to, to push the boundaries of, of, of conservation, sustainability, and green initiatives, uh, you know, we are, we are an easy choice that, that takes care of a big swath of, of water consumption. Um, and, you know, to, to be able to, to be included in that conversation is such a, is such an opportunity uh, that, that really uh, furthers the goal of, of not just uh, what conservation and, and green issues, but, but guest satisfaction and, and, and hospitality. Um, and, you know, I think looking 20, 25 years in, in the future, um, these are the these are the the conversations that will be changing the future of our industry, not right. just you know not just today and tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely right. These two gentlemen are with companies that understand innovation. They understand that sometimes you have to make big bets in order and think differently in order to find success. Think about the real lives that Lloyd's company has saved by changing the way that things were always uh, said that this is the way we do them. But no, that wasn't good enough for him. He innovated, he got into there. Eric, your company taking a concept that nobody ever thought of before, putting the dots together and creating a brand new product that's super consumer friendly, that saves money and also haven't saved the environment at the exact same time, 
Wow, how cool is that? It's so important that you guys take a moment after this. Go connect with Eric. Go connect with Lloyd. You can find them in the main page. Schedule an appointment with them. Learn more about what they're doing. I want to thank you all for being here today. What a great session this was. I'll be back here tomorrow for another one of these innovative sessions. I'm having so much fun learning along with you. Big thanks over to the InFact Show for having us all participate. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.